Alright, hi everybody, welcome back to another video. So this is like a fun video. Um, this is like a Q&A collaboration type video. So Heidi from Restyle Secrets uh, hosted this collaboration video. And there's a whole bunch of other people participating in it. All their, uh, I'm not exactly sure the complete set list. But I know Lori Tate is in it, Amber Resells, Alana, um, uh, Veronica... I don't know, and a whole bunch of other people. I, I know I, I'm i definitely forgetting some. And these other videos are in the links in the description if you want to check them out. If you're new, my name's Keegan. I'm 17 years old, and I resell uh, clothing, shoes, and accessories on Poshmark and on eBay. So this is going to be kind of awkward because I'm literally in a parking lot. I have one hour to film this. It is Saturday, the day before Easter. So happy Easter. Um, we're releasing it on Easter. So, yeah. So, all right. Let's just start. I uh, have a lot of good questions here, and yeah, I'm pretty excited. Okay, consider brand condition, style, cost, and comps. Which do you care the most and least about? Okay, um, okay, I consider brand one. That is, I consider, I care about that the most. And, uh, least about, I would say style, which might surprise some people because I would probably say brand, comps, cost, condition and style is the order because if the comps are good and the style is bad that doesn't really matter i mean if i might think the style is bad but if the comps are like there then it doesn't really matter too much for me if that makes sense i don't know but i have left something behind before because i'm like oh i don't really like this because if i was on the fence about it or something and i don't like the style about that like which so all these factors i do take into account but style is something that doesn't always need to be like, I don't always need to like the item to sell it. So if that makes sense. Okay. Uh, where do I go when I first enter a thrift store? Okay. I go, uh, new racks if they're out and then shoes. Um, obviously new racks are, I always go to them when I can, uh, if they have them out, I always go there first when they're re when they're wheeling them out and I'm still shopping around. I stop whatever I'm doing and I go to their new racks. Um, I, a lot of the times I find really good things on there. I don't always find stuff on the new rack. It's not like you're going to find something every time you go on the new rack. But a lot of the time, or a good amount of the time, I'd say like maybe like 50% of the time, there's like something I'm like actually like a little bit interested in. Um, actually, I just had my highest sale ever with something I got off of a new rack. It was a Laura Piana cashmere sweater and it sold for $400 and I paid five. So definitely go to the new racks if you are able to shop those. All right. And then shoes uh i go to the shoes because it gives me like a kind of a better idea of what's in the store not always there's sometimes where i've had great hauls and i've found no shoes at all or yeah so um like i'm, I'm trying to think of an example i found uh i don't have my best shoe haul ever um like the past summer i found a pair of like brunella cuccinelli sneakers and tom ford sneakers and uh freebird like men's shoes and then a pair of like thursday boots all at one store, all at the same time. And I'm like, okay, there is good stuff in this store. So obviously I went into the men's department, found a little bit more. So like things like that, or like good shoe finds, like kind of makes me, I'm like, okay, somebody that had like, you know, expensive taste or has good brands donated the store. Let me see what I can find. If that makes sense. Okay. Um, department I never go to. I never, I hardly ever, I mean, ever look through the skirt section. Skirts, no matter if it's mini, maxi, midi they just don't sell that well for me in any size i just don't do that well with skirts i have sold skirts before i've tried to sell like some of the top brands like i have a syncocept skirt that's been all right i'm editing this and i'm probably gonna pop in a few times throughout the video but for the skirts thing i want to be clear about something i actually do well with skirts, which are like the athletic skirts from lulam and athleta um like those types of athletic brands, Squirts, I actually do pretty well with those. So I will pick up Squirts. In a long time, that's only listed at $35. And um, I had a mother, like, jean skirt. That took a while to sell. So, yeah, I just don't do the best with skirts. So I, like, just hardly ever go there. And if I find something that's, like, somewhat of a decent brand, I'm like, oh, this is just, like, a skirt. I don't want to get it. So it's kind of like one of those things where it's, like, okay, if I'm going to find a decent brand anyway, then and then just pass on it because it's a skirt, then... Then why am I even looking there? But it's not, I mean, I don't know. Actually, the last time I picked up a skirt was today because I actually did look through the skirt section and I found a, one brand, but I rarely find brands. So, yeah. Okay. 
do you inspect as you go or all at once? Am I good at it? So I, okay, I, I kind of inspect as a, so if I see like a brand on, hmm, like the rack, so I'll see a brand and I'll kind of just like look at it real quick. And if it's, if I can see an obvious flaw, I'll be like, oh, okay, like pass. But after a while, I'll, um, I'll try to go, um, and like really, uh, if I think I want something, I put it in the cart, and after, after, at the end of when I'm kind of done looking, I'll just, like, look through the stuff and really evaluate my decisions, look out comps if I need to, and then I'll check the condition over there. I miss quite a bit of flaws, um, so I don't, I, I don't, I don't think I'm, like, bad at it, but I'm not, definitely not the best. Okay, this is, like, sorry, there's, like, people walking. I don't even care. Okay, I, I definitely would say I wouldn't, I'm not, like, bad. I, I'm not good at it, but I'm not, like, awful. Like, I don't like if that makes sense i don't know okay are comps better or worse when you get home um i don't really th I, I know what some people mean by this because i i've checked like comps in a store and been like oh i thought they were like better at this i don't know i thought they were better at the store but i've also had the experiences of where i've checked comps and then i already got home and like i don't know because sometimes it might be like a specific brand i'll just like quickly look up the brand on poshmark or something and they're like listed like high or something and then when i actually get to the the actual style i'm like oh this style isn't really pre pre performing that well or maybe it's completely opposite where i look up a brand and they're doing the brand is doing okay but the style i have is really good so like i just had that experience with a pair of um vince camuto boots vince camuto is a brand i hardly pick up but i got a pair of like tall leather boots in the bag so and i was like okay I probably can get 50 dollars for these but they end up selling for 100 super fast so i don't know I, I wouldn't say like uh they're always or i don't know i would say that i doesn't really i, don't know, I feel like i'm decent at checking comps but um sometimes i'm i don't know they just go over my head and that's okay all right in three months how many thrift stores do you visit so i'm actually in arkansas right now i live in uh central illinois and uh so i usually go to goodwill primarily goodwills but i you know go i have gone to other places as well but within within the past three months i just went to the bins for like the first time in a while um this weekend um i went to like a salvation army in springfield illinois so but i primarily go to goodwills in my area because they're the biggest uh thrift stores i don't really have anything else besides i mean i do have like a few mom and pop shops but when i go into those i usually don't find as much because there isn't as much donations going into those stores i wish there was more donations going into the stores because i think they're like better organizations than goodwill are but um yeah so I primarily go to Goodwills. So, but in the past three months, I've gone to like buy sell trade stores, consignment stores, a whole I just a whole bunch of different places. So, uh, yeah. But I went to like a uh, I guess thrift stores. Thrift. I wouldn't consider like a consignment store or buy sell trade store a thrift store in my opinion. So I would say like I've gone to the bins uh, the this past weekend, but I wouldn't normally go there within three months at a time. All right. Looking at a listing more than six months old, would you buy it today? Um, that is a great question, and it depends what the item is. If I'm listing something at $25, I want it to sell pretty fast, like under six months, honestly under like three months or like 90 days. If it is over, like I'd say $50, I'm okay with it, you know, sitting six months because the higher price items tend to sit a little bit longer for me, obviously, because somebody might not be willing to pay that price, you know, if that makes sense. Um, so... It doesn't like bother me too much but if it if it's like listed for like $25 and has like no attention and it's been listed for six months and I'm like okay I probably shouldn't have bought this uh, let me see the next thing oh which bothers you more a return or not finding an item that you just sold so I have uh, returns on eBay within 30 days if the buyer pays shipping there and back so the returns don't really bother me a return does bother me if I had like somebody want to I had a a dress that sold for ten dollars on eBay. The person paid like six dollars, six dollars and fifty cents to send it there, and they were paying like six fifty, six dollars and fifty cents to send it back. Obviously, if I've sold something for ten dollars, I had that dress for like over a year, and it was just not a good buy. I was like, why? Are you? Just like I was like, I was kind of annoyed. I was like, just literally keep the dress. I, w I was like, oh my gosh. Oh yeah, that one was really frustrating. I was like, j literally just keep it because it's like you're. I, I, I don't know. They 
it's almost like and then i okay but what i did though i was like i do i did not want this dress back i was gonna donate it if they came back so i offered them like a half uh i offered them five dollars uh if they just kept the dress and they ended up keeping it so i still made my money back on the dress and stuff but i did not want the dress back so i wish like i don't know i'm not even sure if there is a sitting on ebay if i could turn off returns for items under 25 dollars, i would because the amount of returns for under $25 items that I get are like actually like more than like my higher price items which doesn't really make sense to me so and of course the items I'm selling under $25 are usually items that have been sitting longer that I'm looking to move out so when they have to come back into my inventory it gets a little bit frustrating but um actually I think I, I have a really good inventory system that works for me I just have everything organized by category so like dresses jeans pants um long sleeve tops short sleeve tops and have them all organized by size so i have one bin that's like size small um long sleeve tops one bin that's like size medium long sleeve tops by long sleeve top i mean like sweater jacket or it could be like a long sleeve blouse so and then i have like jeans are like a size 23 to 26 and then 27 to 29 and then 30 up so i i have that good i have that down so um usually have it in the correct bin sometimes i'll be like kind of sleepy or just not paying attention i'll put something in the wrong bin so then i have to like go find it so that can be a bit frustrating but i'd say like returns um because i rarely find items i don't find items that i've just sold in like my bins i'd say like the returns make me more mad especially when it's like a case on poshmark that i don't think i should have lost um but it is what it is both of them are part of like the business so they both of them like don't like bother me too much again i do have my returns on ebay so it's not like a huge deal to me all right when was the last time you went to the mall actually so i went to the mall this weekend i went to the something one of the malls in little rock and they had a lemon store so i got two things i guess i can show you real quick i did pull these because i got this question and heidi said like we could pretty much do anything with this video so i'll show you so for lululemon i okay it's really interesting i got some good information so if i find a flawed lululemon item piece i mean items that um, usually seam damage. If it has damage at the seams, I would pick it up and I would bring it to Lululemon. And usually what they would do is they would give me like credit, um, like a gift card or something to spend at that store. They have changed their policy. So it used to be within four years of the items, like production date that they would do it. And then they switched it to two years. And now effective April 16th, they're changing it to just one year. Most of the items are, okay, 99% of Lululemon I find is more than a year old. So like that pretty much those days are over for me getting credit for lululemon to spend on myself so um but i d was able to do it one last time so i got two shirts so basically these were like just about free um well not really because I, I i think i paid um, probably five dollars for two lululemon item, lemon items that i took in and i got these out of it so i got these for both two dollars and fifty cents each which is good this is a men's size small and this is a like a purple um soft it feels like viore honestly um but it's coming up like almost like a gray on ca camera but it is purple um and this is a soft jersey short sleeve this was 58 dollars um but again i did not pay that full price for that i mean i kind of did because i had spent 58 dollars on the gift card but um and then here is the logo as well so my friend had this one in blue and i was like oh i really like that like what is that and he told me what it was and then i went to the store looking for it to try it on and i got the purple one all right and these are my favorite shirts this is also a size small and this is just a black t-shirt and this is the fundamental tee from lululemon so this is 58 dollars as well um i like my lululemon metal ventex but one of my friends like told me about these and he's like i really like them i think you would too and I don't know. I just have loved these so much more. And they're cheaper than the Metal Vent Tech. The Metal Vent Tech is $78 and these are only $58. Or I shouldn't say only $58, but um they are $58, which is cheaper than the Metal Vent Tech. And I like them more. They don't like they aren't as recon recognizable as the um Metal Vent Tech. So if you're like somebody that wants people to know like what brand you're wearing, then this might be an issue for you, but I don't really care that much. These are Pima Cotton and like Elastane blend, I think. Yeah, Pima Cotton and Lycra, which is like a stretch so it feels so, super good against the skin i have the, this is my third one and like um a color so i all so i got this one uh i didn't have a black one yet so i got that so that was the last time i've been to the mall but i don't normally go because i don't have a reason to because i just buy stuff on poshmark but i did try a few other things oh oh my gosh i'm getting kicked out here there's my sister 
Um, okay. So I don't go, normally go to the mall as much because I will just buy something on Poshmark, but I did try a few things on at Lululemon to see if I could get better or cheaper on Poshmark, so I'll do that sometimes. Okay, um, next question. Would you source, what's your source for what's trending in fashion? So that's also a good question. And honestly, it's my experiences. So obviously I go to school, so a lot of people try, a lot of people try to dress trendy there also it's kind of like my experience is on Poshmark so if I have something that's uh, a certain style that like skirts like I don't really I don't know people say like the long denim midi skirts are selling but I since I haven't done well with skirts like I'm just gonna say like I'm not gonna pick as many up unless they're like a super like exceptional brand but at the same time um like people say that skinny jeans are outdated they're out of style so they like might pass on them but there are still some brands that i can move skinny jeans pretty easily in and that's from my experience of selling those so that's kind of my source is my own experience of what's selling for me and yeah okay something else i wanted to add is like honestly like being observant like out in public and just like other settings is like um i don't know Ever since I've been a reseller, I've just been, like, observant to, like, what people are wearing, especially, like, shoes for whatever reason. So, I don't know, just, like, certain styles of shoes or, I don't know, I can, I still see people wearing, like, all different types of jeans. So, people are still, what might be outdated to one person isn't outdated to somebody else. So, I don't know. So, you just kind of, I don't know. That's why I kind of, like, I watch some trend report videos, but they aren't, like, the most helpful uh, YouTube videos for me because... At the end of the day, people are going to wear what they're comfortable with. Say, just like looking at what people are wearing on like an everyday basis um, also helps me like figure out like what's trending and what people are like comfortable wearing. Okay, my next question is wh which category would you never give up? Probably jeans, which is really, really interesting because I have not worn a pair of jeans since second grade. But I feel like a lot of people, um, I feel like most people want like a good pair of jeans in their wardrobe um the top brands that i'm looking for are very expensive and people want to find those at like a cheaper price and they're also willing to spend a lot of money on them i think I've, out of any category i've sold more jeans for over a hundred dollars than any like other things i also look in the jeans section every time i go to the thrift store or buy sell trade store um so maybe if i looked more at like the dress section or uh, more closely at the shoes I would those numbers would be a little bit different and I've had like more dresses or shoes over $100 but jeans are super easy for me to list I just really like selling them and looking through them looking through the sh uh, jeans is pretty easy for me the dresses not so much um what job or activity in your past prepared you for reselling so I've basically been like thrifting for my whole life so I guess like that kind of helped and also like field day in elementary school really um, I don't know, pers like, I don't know, pushed me, because in field day, I would get really excited about, I don't know, just the activity that we were doing, and then I kind of get the same thing with reselling, so if I'm going to a bag sale or the bins, like, I'm, I get pretty focused, and I just try to do the best I can, or if I'm, like, going through a new rack, I try to go, like, quickly or whatever. I kind of think of it as, like, a competition with myself sometimes, I don't know. Or if there's another reseller there, it's like not necessarily a competition with them, but I just have that in the back of my mind. So, all right. Um, what is a fast sale and what is a slow sale? So fast sale for me is probably anything under three months over like $35, but a slow sale is like anything over like mm, six months that sells under $35. But I don't know, it kind of depends on price point for me. Again, yeah, but I try to, I think my, I'm trying to get my average sales price up, but it's about 30, I think it's almost 35 or $40 or, at the moment. But sometimes if I think something's going to sell fast or if it's like a Lululemon top, I kind of have a hard time leaving those. I, uh, it might sell for like $25 and sit a, a bit of time, but that's all right. Um, if you had to give up selling clothing, what hard good category do you know the most about? Or if none, what category would you want to learn about? I'd say probably, I don't, that's a really good question. Um, I, I honestly don't even, I don't, I don't think I know really any hard good categories. I've sold one <laughs> hard good and it was like a Barbie dream clock, like during the Barbie movie. And I thought it was a good pickup, 
because I looked up comps and then that was an example of like when I got home the comps weren't that great so I listed it on eBay auction and it sold for like a dollar and 95 cents again I got it for free so it wasn't like a huge deal but it just was like really for that price and I paid they paid like $15 shipping too so uh, it was just really risky, a really risky purchase for one do to ship it, and I was scared it was gonna break and things like that. But I ended up being fine. So, yeah. Um, which kind of would you want to learn about? I think like the wicker like baskets. Um, I'm not really sure if that's necessarily a hard good because they're not. I don't. know, I think pillows are interesting. I don't think is that even a hard good. I don't know, but I don't know. I just, hard, the term hard good just makes me a little bit nervous because I just think of things breaking. But I don't know. I'd say probably like, mm, like maybe like the Franklin Covey binders, I guess I'll say. That's what I know the most about because I know those are good if you find them, but also I, there's a lot of other things I could learn about, like maybe like vases or something. I don't know. All right. Here, these are supposed to be the rapid questions. All right. Fast nickel or slow dime. Um, okay. This is not a rapid response. I have to think about this one. I'd say like maybe slow dime. Because since I like part-time reseller, I don't have all the time in the world to like list the bread and butter items and everything like that. So again, I try to have my average sales price high. And so I'd say slow dime because of that, because I'm trying to list less, but like make more, if that makes sense. So I'd say slow dime. All right, bargain hunt or pay up. So I would have answered this like, if you asked me a year ago, I'd have said bargain hunt, but lately I've been paying up for a lot more things, uh, as, and it's been going fine. I paid $27 for a dress the other day, which I did not think I would do like a year ago, but then it sold in like a week for $250. So that was an example of like paying up. So I'd say like within the past like couple of months, as Goodwill prices increase, I'd say paying up, but I do like a good bargain find. So that one's a really tough one for me. All right, take photos or write listings. I'd say take photos, but again, I don't really like doing either of them, but I'd say I like taking photos more than writing listings. Now, if shipping was on here, I would put that last. So I would do take photos, write listings, and then shipping, but all right. Clean shoes or sew on a button. Um, clean shoes, I there's just no way I could do that. Um, I don't think I was very clear with that. I would, I don't, I've never tried to sew on a button or I've tried once and it didn't work. So I would rather clean shoes, especially if I have to leather condition like shoes with my Doc Martin Wonder Ball some that is actually probably one of my favorite things to do in reselling. Like I'd like it just as much as thrifting as polishing some shoes with Doc Martin Wonder Ball some. I mean I obviously like thrifting more, but polishing Doc Martin Wonder Ball some is a close second. I don't think I, I I think I've tried before and it just I just gave up. So all right, only sell men's or only sell hard goods. That one's so easy. Only sell men's. I probably sell I sell a really good amount of men's. I don't um, my men's bins are very, very small. Actually, um, I don't, in my inventory, I have one bin for like men's tops and jackets and sweaters and things like that. And then one bin for men's pants, shorts. I just move through my men's stuff pretty quickly and um, it sells pretty well for me. So um, sometimes better than women's. Like, and like the premium denim brands, like I don't always pick up like AG men's jeans or, or AG women's jeans or page women's jeans but and men's is actually sell pretty well for me so um yeah i definitely would only sell men's if i had the option between hard goods because yeah okay um only thrift stores are only bins so since i don't have a bins near me i would say only thrift stores but again i went to the bins this weekend and it was fine but i don't know i just think the prices here where, where the bins are aren't like horrible as it is and like the bins obviously are supposed to be cheaper, but I would say like only thrift stores just because like they're on the racks and they're just like easier for me to look for. And I don't know if, if that makes sense. I would just say only thrift stores because I do like to shop on like the racks. But honestly, I like um, the shoe bins at the bins more than like the shoes on like the racks just because I think it's more fun to like look through and it's just like about the same looking through. I don't know. I do like looking through the shoe bins at the bins. All right, only eBay or only Poshmark. So I started Poshmark like a year before I started eBay. So I'd say only Poshmark. And I think I have more sales on Poshmark just because um, in that year when I was learning like how to resell and how to get good at it, I guess, um, I like was learning what was selling on Poshmark and not necessarily was learning on eBay. 
I had a, I've had a pretty hard time selling Eileen Fisher on uh, Poshmark, but once I switched to eBay, Eileen Fisher quickly became one of my top selling brands. So I don't know, brands can really differ between um, the like the sites that I sell on. So um, on eBay, a lot of people like look at the sell through rate, and sometimes I'll look at that as well. But I feel like they, the people that look at the sell through rate, are sometimes more focused on selling on eBay. Whereas Poshmark, uh, I don't know, it can be like a little bit different. For an example, um, I don't know, the Fousey dress. Oh, that's, oh, that's so awkward. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hi. Okay. For example, like that Fousey dress, they were like for new with tags and a size extra large. Oh, that, that, the, this Fousey dress was the dress that I paid $27 for the consignment store that sold for $250 in less than a week. There was uh, like nine less than new with tags on eBay and uh, zero sold. And if you're only looking at sell through rate, that's like a 0% sell through rate. That's like terrible. Um, nine active and zero sold, but again, mine sold quickly. So I, sell through rate doesn't always matter um, if you like price fairly and stuff. So I would say like Poshmark, I would uh, I would do only Poshmark. All right, give up reselling or give up YouTube. So I really do enjoy YouTube and it's like maybe something I would do for like a career path like down the road for like, I don't know, a different thing. Um, but I do enjoy both of them, so that's tough for me. I just like interacting with an audience and things like that. But I'd say probably give up YouTube just because I I don't I have not made a single cent on YouTube, which again doesn't bother me because I like doing it. So um, occasionally I'll have like people from my YouTube like go into my Poshmark like, eBay stores and buy something, which I always appreciate and I'm very grateful for. But I'd say I make more. Um, mo <laughs> I'd say like 99.9% .9 of my sales are from just random people um, out there buying them that haven't watched my any of or don't follow or watch any of my social media. So yeah, so those are all the questions. Um, let me know if you have any additional questions you have below. So I really actually I thought this list was quite good. So thank you so much, Heidi, for organizing all of this and for um, everybody else that participated in this club video. So everyone's uh, channels and their videos are linked down below. You now, if out of any of these questions, is there something that like you would answer as well so um yeah so thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video